Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the two Bundesligas. Yeah, after all this draw drama that we had in the afternoon, I decided yeah in the evening I'll shoot now the reviews. Uh, and yeah, I have to see how many I'll get done uh, in the evening and maybe I'll leave a couple for the morning, something like that. I actually didn't initially want to start in Austria, but kind of out of habit, I went with Austria. Wearing Lask, this tells you, Lask actually won another game. They had three wins in a row, including the one in the Europa League, which is something that did not happen all that often this season. Actually, I think it never happened this season, so uh makes me very, very, very happy. And I for once I'm even doubling up here. Yeah, Wolfsburg were so bad, they don't even deserve to be on that wall here but yeah that just about keeps Lusk in the running for the upper playoff spot it will be it will be a hard task we'll talk about that game in a little bit uh in germany i mean all that i can say i mean there was a pretty big matchup between freiburg and hoffenheim which no one really <laughs> paid attention to we of course saw that uh, we have now a new leipzig coach in domenico tedesco had a successful start and cloudbox was continue so that is a, a story but i think the main story is you saw the difference between bayern and dortmund bayern played badly found themselves behind rallied won Dortmund found themselves down, had chance after chance after chance after chance and cannot get the win. And so the gap widens and therefore um, it is inevitable that Bayern will become champions. But let's go to the really good news. As I said, last winning at Austria Vienna. I mean, first let's look at the other results here. I mean, Salzburg winning Tirol is probably not as, as big of a surprise. Also, Ried 2 1 over Alltag. Um, yeah, keeps them in, in the running. Rapid winning at Admira Vaca. I said it before, it's a big one because uh, the Admira coach is a Rapid legend uh, in Andreas Herzog. Uh, probably the biggest surprise is how clearly Sturm Graz won against Austria Klagenfurt, which is a result that I had my eye on because Lask is playing Klagenfurt next time. However, this is after the winter break. Yes, this was the last round before the winter break and I don't have the fixtures yet. Yet for the next round, so just uh, saying, saying that you will not see this in the stats cast either. So yeah, uh, that is a little bit of a, a surprise, and as I said, this might actually bode well for Lusk because Klagenfurt and or Reed, uh, but especially Klagenfurt because there's a head-to-head -head coming. That's the one where I'm looking forward. Yeah, maybe those we can catch. Maybe I still don't see it quite well. And then Austria Vienna Lusk. I actually was looking forward to that game, but I was so. I, I, I mean, I dragged myself to watch it. I almost wanted to turn off after like uh, 10 minutes because within 20 seconds, Austria Vienna had taken the lead. That's the second time in a row that they scored in the first minute. In the derby against Rapid, it took a little bit longer. This was literally, I think, 19 seconds. And it's, I think, one of the fastest goals ever, of course, scored in the Bundesliga. I uh, had a big chance to make it to and I thought, oh, this is going to be an f up game in many ways but Lusk actually rallied and then they had a shot that was clearly padded down by Mattel with the uh, uh, arm kind of here that it took four minutes to decide that this was a penalty I found a little bit weird to be honest but then Harvard steps up makes it 1-1 and at that point then Lusk actually really controlled the game uh, and got the lead through a Balic goal where I have to say uh, what the Austria Austria defense is trying to do here uh, by not really really attacking was crazy but yeah 2-1 yay and the game was actually quite good 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 moment but unfortunately Lusk could not keep that lead because Jukic uh, there was a, a the one last attack for Austria Vienna in many ways that, that, that came, it was cleared uh, half-heartedly and Jukic from, uh, wasn't involved, wasn't picked up and uh, slams it into that, it's 2-2. Two, two. And I'm kind of so-and-so, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't look all, uh, leaking goals on the back, but going forward, looking all right. I thought Lask could win at Austria Vienna at the, at, at the point on the right. After the half, they should definitely have scored. Uh, within a minute, again, the minute, uh, Gruber, who had just come, come out, hey, point blank range the goalie is uh hustling to go to come back he takes the shot but there was one defender on the line who just stretches his foot out and saves the shot i mean if there's just a little bit harder a, a little bit higher or like five centimeters uh to the left 
that shot goal goes in. And then two or, two or three other scenes where Lusk well could, could have scored. Then the game got even again and I felt better again and I turned it off. I think two minutes after Lusk scores the go-ahead had goal in the game that I at this time I really thought this game is going uh, level and it will end 2-2. 3-2 it ended because the only chance that I was was shortly after, after, after the goal, but uh, they made very little out of a good chance after a free kick. But, you know, if you try to shoot with the upper, upper thigh, you have no chance. So, last win, 3-2, which at the moment only puts them in ninth place. Austria Vienna lose and are falling below, so it's Rapid and Reed uh, going in now. Uh, what I, last week, last had only, I think, uh, roughly 10% chance to double their chances of making it uh, above the line, but it's still a long shot, I gotta, gotta say. Uh, and a lot of things gotta go their way. Uh, Sturm Graz also now in uh, second place overall. Let's move over to Germany, where my beloved Köln got their first home defeat to Augsburg, one that I don't uh, really get. Bayern Munich, as I said, uh, almost deservedly being down to Mainz at the halftime through an uneasy goal. Uh, but then Kings, a common, a great shot, makes it uh, one, 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 I think, went through the legs of the goalie. And then Musiala, 2-1. Bayern just needing to do what they do, 2-1 win. And that's exactly what Dortmund did not do. Yes, in the first half, I thought that Bochum was well in, in the game. And, you know, this, this is a local derby. I mean, Dort, uh, Bochum and Dortmund are not too, too far away from, from each other. So there were many fans from both teams in, in, in there, which probably was a pretty good atmosphere overall. And Dortmund uh, conceded a penalty goal through Polter. It was not the goalie who, who less than two to took the penalty. Um, and that just it was the firing shot for a second furious second half for Dortmund where they had chance after chance they had a goal uh, disallowed by Wolf for an offside in the build up Haaland uh, was not the one who was at the end of chance but more like the assist giver and that's exactly what happened in the 85th minute when he assisted Brandt and at that point you actually thought that Dortmund could really turn things around after the chance they had already missed in the first half was not meant to be it's 1-1 one, one, and so the gap widens. As I said, Hoffenheim, a last-minute win at Freiburg, who had just beaten Klappach 6-0. And Freiburg now find them outside of the top five. So uh, that and Hoffenheim go in, 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 in there. So this was kind of, kind of a sleeper game that no one really looked uh, at in, 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 in a way. As I said, Leipzig got going with a 4-1 over Gladbach. The game should have... I mean, in the first half, it was all uh, Leipzig with Guardiol and Andre Silva within a short uh, period, making it 2-2-0 and everyone already... Oh, is this another route for Gladbach? Then Andre Silva with the miss of the season. Point blank range. A gaping goal open and he puts it on, on the bar from maybe a little bit further out, but still, this was... A pretty bad miss um, and that actually allowed Gladbach back in and they got their goal um, kind of late later on in the 88th Pennsylvania and then the press pressing forward twice in stoppage time they give up goals so it became in a clear score line and I think that Ade Hütter is getting under considerable pressure now I mean they have leaked 14 goals in three games and kind of what his task was was to uh, stiffening up the defense a little bit. Now nah, that's not going all the all as well. Uh, Wolfsburg after the good start on the Kofeld are really falling apart. Uh, Stuttgart winning there. Greuther Fürth getting the first win, and I think this was uh, very much helped by that uh, Union Berlin had a big game in the uh, in the Europa Conference League um, in the midweek. And then a remarkable display by Eintracht Frankfurt. They were in the 22nd 2 0 down by uh, two Patrick Schick goals. But um, within a minute of the f um, f uh, second goal, Tuta actually gets an equalizer and Lindström then just seven minutes later makes it 2-2. And then it was all Frankfurt who uh, were playing like in trance in many ways and adding, uh, having creating many, many ch 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 chances and having many goals. I mean, as soon as Ndika in the 50th made it 3-2, there was only one winner. And uh, Jakic and, Mus and, and So, who had actually given up the penalty uh, in the first half, added to uh, the route. It was pretty impressive what Frankfurt 
were showing overall. We have a midweek route come, coming up and I guess this video will post on Tuesday morning. So it's on the same day. Um, for me, the standard tie is actually Gladbach Frankfurt because of Adi Hütter, who just went from Frankfurt to Gladbach. It would be the, if it was reversed, a little bit more interesting. Uh, Leverkusen Hoffenheim, three against four. That's a sleeper one as well. And Stuttgart Bayern is an early, you know, this is a Southern duel. I think those are the games uh, that are really worth watching out for, in my opinion. So that's all what happened in Austria and in Germany. Please, if you want to add anything, drop a line below. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!